Hello, I'm Anthony. Welcome to the Essential Guide to System Configuration in Cubase 12. What you can see on screen at the moment is one of my songs, one of my Cubase projects, and I've spent an awful lot of time configuring Cubase to look exactly how I want it to, and I think I've got it pretty polished at this point. Over the course of this video series, I'm going to lead you through that stuff. But beyond that, I'm also going to try to ensure you against system issues. Every now and again, you'll have a problem with Cubase. Something will crash, it'll stop working, whatever. And if you lodge a support ticket with Steinberg, one of the very first things that they almost always say is try deleting all of your preferences or try moving all of your preferences somewhere else so that Cubase can't see them. And then Cubase loads up as a default application. Well, I've spent years configuring those preferences. I don't want to lose them. If the only way to solve the problem is to throw all of my preferences away, I need to be able to get back to that stage pretty quickly. And so what I'm going to do over this video series is try to show you as many looks under the hood as I possibly can, show you where those preferences live and how you can rebuild them in the event of any kind of system issue. So it's not just a case of me doing a show and tell. I want to try to get to a situation where we truly understand how Cubase is configured and where everything lives. If that sounds interesting to you, please check out the Patreon or YouTube channel member links below. Fabulous way to help support my channel. Now I think the best thing to do if I'm going to show you how to configure a system from scratch is to actually get my system back to scratch. So I'm going to throw all of my configuration away. I'm going to close this project and I'm going to make my PC think that Cubase is basically installed from new. There's a few asterisks on there and we'll talk about that in a moment. So I'll just close this project down. And here I am back up and running again. As you can see, a completely different interface. You can also see these, this bar, uh, the, the volume bar on the right hand side flashing away. That's the control room. In order for me to get to the stage where I can carry on making this video, I had to make some changes to Cubase itself because I'm talking to you through Cubase. So until I'd actually configured it to talk to my audio interface, I wasn't actually able to carry on the video. This is a great test case, however, because I'm going to show you exactly what I did to get Cubase up and running. Now, as you're going to see very shortly, this is not a video series for beginners. I'm presuming that you have a basic functional um, understanding of Cubase. And over the course of this series, I am going to show you so much of my setup that you can basically treat it as a tutorial if you want. But really, it's all about the, the back end configuration, helping us to understand as much as possible how Cubase works so that if anything ever goes wrong, we've got more tools in our toolbox to try to fix that stuff. Because I just wanted to put that caveat in place. If you're a complete beginner coming to Cubase for the very first time, this probably isn't the series for you. Okay, anyway, let's get on with it. Now, in order to get to the stage where I could talk to you again, I, need to make, I needed to make three changes to the configuration in the back end. We'll go through each of those. The first one was in the general studio setup. Now, I've already um, done videos. I'll put a link somewhere. Um, on how to configure your system and all of these various studio setup options. I'm not going into the detail of that today, but suffice to say that this is my audio interface with all of its various inputs and outputs, and these need to be configured properly. So you can see I talked to you on input three that there's my microphone input. These settings live in a file called portsetup.xml, and this is our first look at this very important folder on your computer. Now this is a PC path, it's in the C app data roaming Steinberg Cubase 1264 folder. Uh, there's a different path for Mac users. And beyond saying that, I'm not going to cater specifically to Mac users. Um, if you use a Mac and you want to draw inferences from this, I'm basically going to be talking about system folders and then you'll have to uh, map across. I don't own a Mac, so I don't want to speak with any authority on the subject. And here we've got this file called portsetup.xml. Now let's just have a look on the left hand side so that I can explain to you what I'm doing over the course of this video series. I've got two different views of Cubase. This folder over here um, is the original, is my actual system uh, preferences folder. And as you can see, I've just added the word full to the end of the folder name. So Cubase doesn't see that folder, doesn't know it's there. What I then did was launched Cubase completely from scratch uh, because it had no preferences folder at all and it builds its own, it builds a brand new one called Cubase 1264, or whatever the version of Cubase is that you're running, and it'll populate it with all of these defaults. So this is very, very close to what you can see here. There are a few subtle changes that I had to make, like I say, just to get up and running. And the first one was this port setup file. 
basically overwrote this file with the one that came from my full folder. So let's have a look in here. And you can see here's all of my various audio interface settings. And this is where I've got all of my labels set and you can see all of the various different configuration options. So when I go into that setup preferences dialog, I get to see all of the various options. So that's stage one to tell Cubase what my audio interface looks like. Step two is that I have to configure my audio routing. Again, I've covered this in very great detail elsewhere, but I've got an inputs, outputs and control room tab because I use the control room. Each one of those have presets that I've previously created. So here you can see the Anthony's control room IO takes care of my microphone. I need to create this blank Anthony's empty output preset because of the way the control room works. You have to have a bus even if it's unconnected. And then the most important one of all is the control room. So I've got a preset here called Anthony's control room audio. And when I select each one of those, I get everything routed properly. I get to use my control room and I can talk to you again. In order to get access to all of those options, I needed to copy two separate files across from my old preferences folder. And they're both in the presets subfolder. So this is your basic, your, your Steinberg, Roaming Steinberg Cubase 1264. And then inside the presets folder, you need control room presets.pxml. That unsurprisingly contains all of your control room options. And here's my Anthony's control room audio preset. And the second one, it took me a while to hunt this one down because it's very, very unintuitively named RAM presets.xml. You need that one as well. And if I search for the word Anthony in here, there's my Anthony's empty output and my Anthony's control room IO. So there are the options, those input and output configuration options that you set in your audio connections dialog. This is where they live. As a matter of interest, seeing these preset options, there's no option to show in Explorer or see file name or see path name. It's not a file. There's no, nothing on anywhere on my system where there's a file called Anthony's control room IO. It's that configuration uh, information in the RAM presets XML file. The final thing I needed to do in order to be able to talk to you was enable the control room by, because by default it's disabled. So I needed to turn this button on here and talking to you through my microphone, through the talkback system of my control room. You don't have to if you're configuring your system and you don't need to do, I mean, I'm, I make videos for YouTube, so I need to route um, audio in multiple different directions. Makes my setup a little bit more complex. But as I say, I've done a full series on audio routing in Cubase where I explain all of those intricacies. One final thing I want to talk about today is our first look at some of the preferences options. I want you to go into the general folder and configure these uh, to your liking. I use the hub and from this point onwards over the course of this series, you'll see me using the hub. Maximum backup files set to 10 just prevents your, your, your system getting completely washed out with .back files. Let's have a little look at that so that I can explain what I mean. So in my projects, if I have a look at, there's a project and you can see it caps out at 10 and doesn't go past. So you've basically only ever got a maximum of 10 backups to go back to, but over the course of 15 minutes, that gives me plenty. What's that two and a half hours worth of, um, that's, that's more than enough safety net for my liking. Over the course of multiple sessions, if you want to take copies of projects and do that thing, that's, that's no problem at all. Autosave, just, I mean, well, who wouldn't turn it on and set your autosave interval to something that's not going to irritate you. You don't notice any performance hit when it does an autosave, but if you do them too quickly, it's actually difficult to find the backup that you need. So I find 15 minutes to be a nice compromise. So at this point, I've got myself to the stage where I have a working Cubase again. I can talk to you on the microphone. I can record, I can play back. My audio interface is working properly. In the subsequent videos in this series, we'll basically step into different areas of functionality in the application. I'll show you how I use those features and why I made the decisions that I did. And as much as possible, I'll try to show you behind the scenes where that information, where that configuration information is stored and what you can do to manage and protect yourself in the event of any kind of system problems. Hope you enjoyed this one. Please hit the like button if you did. I'll see you next time. Thanks a lot.